Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video from Somos Biology. And in this series of videos we are talking about reproduction. In the last series we talked about the reproduction in flowering plants. In sexual reproduction in flowering plants which was known as double fertilization. While in this series of videos we will be talking about the reproduction in human. And we can divide this chapter into four main components. One, male reproductive system. And the anatomy of male reproductive system to understand the gametogenesis that is the spermatogenesis which is uh, the gamete from the male the sperm and the production of sperm the second is female reproductive system anatomy of female reproductive system with gametogenesis which is known as oogenesis in case of female uh, the production of ovum or egg and then we'll also see the modification of the ovum synthesis in female with the menstruation and the menstrual cycle which makes a female body ready for the fertilization event right and once we know this this gametogenesis that is spermatogenesis oogenesis menstrual cycle all this uh, uh, different events they are all pre fertilization events so all of this even take place even before the fertilization that is actual the fusion of both the gametes above that event then the, the third part is a fertilization and implantation of the fertilized egg which is also known as a zygote into the endometrium of a woman and that is very very interesting and important step because in humans we always undergo the process of internal uh, embryogenesis the embryo is developed inside the womb of the mother that's why we'll study the fertilization and implantation together and the fourth thing is the pregnancy and the embryo development in the womb and we'll look at the details of placenta and how the growing embryo start to take nutrients and start to modify its structure so these are all the steps of or the subtopics that we'll study in this chapter so in this first video we are going to talk about the male reproductive system and the male gametogenesis which is also known as spermatogenesis now remember one simple thing the all the thing that we'll discuss now is to keep one thing in our mind that how the male reproductive system produce the gamete the male gamete and what is the male gamete sperm so how the sperm is produced for the production of the sperm and for its nutrients to make its structure and its features alive uh, they need to be produced in different pouches in our body specific organs that of our body which develop sperm not all the part of our body does that so if you focus on that part of our body it's this very familiar part of the body for so this is the region which is not a unique part although but the idea of this gametogenesis and the release of sperm is also linked with the release of urine or excretory system because remember one simple thing in excretory system what we know that is the urinary bladder where uh, the urine is stored and then the urine will be released right externally that's the idea so in this case also we will see that once the sperm is produced sperm is not produced in the bladder but sperm will take its journey through that same tunnel to come outside that's the idea so both are in the same connective way now if you look at this picture it may look complicated but the thing is really simple if you if you break this components down you can see it's not that complicated you know this structure here this is the portion this is the portion which involved in the process of sperm production which is separated along with uh, the external side of our uh, part that is the penis so this is the portion that is present is known as the testicle so testicle is the organ where the sperm is produced now we have two testicles so one pair of testicles so one of that is only visible in this picture the other one is not drawn here so the testicle is where we have all the tiny cells who always are working to produce the sperm but this testicle is not present as it is it's covered with a covering with, with, with a membrane outside this coating outside known as scrotum now why is so because the testicle is inside the testicle what happens always the sperm is being produced and huge number of sperms continues to be produced now if i ask you what is a sperm 
the sperm is a cell what kind of cell a haploid cell what do you mean by haploid you know all of our body cells if you look at the cell of a skin cell of our brain cell of our liver all of them they have two set of chromosomes so 23 pairs of chromosome but in sperm we have only one set of the chromosome so only 23 chromosomes so a set of chromosomes known as 2 into n and only one set uh, one uh, particular chromosome without any set is known as n so haploid is n diploid is 2 into n similarly we name different things if, if any other type of chromosomes are present at triploid we call it 3 into n tetraploid 4 into n so n is only one uh, and uh, 2n means 2 so that will be a pair two set so if I look at here this particular testicle this is the testicle the red colored drawing in here it's arbitrary figure this is the testicle where the sperm will be produced but it's under a pouch known as the scrotum and the job of scrotum here is very important because as I told you the sperms are those haploid cells now how exactly haploid cells are produced right if you recall the idea when we talk about the cell division there are two types of cell division mitosis and meiosis in mitosis what happens uh, a 2n cell or diploid cell produce a diploid daughter cell but in a meiosis what happens a diploid mother cell will produce a haploid daughter cell that's the idea so from 2n one cell there will be two n number chromosome containing cell can be produced so this is meiosis so inside this testicle meiosis is going on all the time to produce the sperm because sperm or in case of female if you look at ovum which is egg always should be haploid in uh, in their chromosome number because the fusion of sperm and egg will take place and that will make the zygote from the zygote another organism will be produced another human will be produced so if they are not haploid because you know if you take this is let's say this is a sperm haploid this is egg also haploid join them together you will form a diploid but if you take two diploids it will make a tetraploid right and that's not the case because all the humans should be diploid in nature so the only way to produce it is to make and reduce the chromosome number by half during meiosis so meiosis is very active in this testicle inside the testicle there are specific cells out there so as the cells are continuing to divide and making the sperm a lot of uh, energy is produced and uh, so heat is also uh, introduced so what happens you know our body there's a core temperature that our body always maintain known as a core body temperature it's near about that 98.5 degrees Fahrenheit or you can say 37 degrees Celsius temperature so that 37 degrees Celsius temperature is our core body temperature and all the cells all the systems trying to maintain that temperature right while we are living have you ever imagined when a person is dead you see people say that that person is cold why because the internal body temperature is failed to be maintained because all the activities in the body is stopped that's why it feel cold right so in this case this inside the scrotum the scrotum is designed in a way so that it can reduce the core temperature by 2 to 2.5 degrees Celsius in the testicles because normally while this process continue to go on a lot of heat and energy is going to be generating there so that's why they need to keep it and also for the production of the sperm it's optimum to be a little bit like 35 degrees Celsius or 34 degrees Celsius temperature that's why scrotum provides this this insulator they act as an insulator to separate the testicle from the surrounding environment uh, to reduce the temperature down so now this is our in organ of interest this is what we will talk about now so if you look at the structure inside this uh, inside this testicle you can see there are so many fragments known as testicular lobules okay so these lobules that you can see inside the lobule there are small tube like structures hugely coiled like a spring so it's not shown here because it's very difficult to show it in this small scale drawing but it's far complex and a lot of spring like coiling in the tubule those tubules are known as what seminiferous tubule right seminiferous tubule is the actual place where the sperm will be produced remember that 
because inside the seminiferous tubule if you look at in there the seminiferous tubule in the lobular part can have these two types of uh, the cells this one type of cell that is present in the seminiferous tubule are primary spermatocyte there are two types of cells remember inside this this seminiferous tubule if you look at the structure you'll find two things if i draw a uh, crude structure you know there are this this cells surrounding this place okay so there are this two type of structures there are few cells actually containing the seminiferous tubule region these are the cells for example and there are this extra the the space surrounding the seminiferous tubule we call it interstitial fluid that is sur surrounding the seminiferous tubule region so the cells present in the seminiferous tubule region these are known as primary spermatocyte primary spermatocyte and the interstitial fluid surrounding and there are few cells in that interstitial fluid known as sertoli's cells sertoli sertoli's cells so primary spermatocytes and sertoli cells these are the two types of cells that are present in this seminiferous tubule structure right so the primary spermatocyte are the preliminary cells these are the precursor cells which will divide to produce sperm so if you ask me a question primary spermatocyte cells are diploid or haploid the answer is diploid they are not haploid so they 2n 2n diploid cells but this primary spermatocyte will divide by meiosis to produce haploid sperm we'll see that in a moment on the other hand this the sertoli cells will provide nutrients to this primary spermatocyte while the per primary spermatocyte will be converted to sperm there are sequential events like primary spermatocyte converted to secondary spermatocyte secondary spermatocytes converted to spermatid and then spermatid are uh, actually known as uh, the sperm right uh, so these are this this different steps so we'll see the different steps of this reaction Uh, especially in the primary spermatocyte is also a little bit advanced version the crude version of the cell is known as spermatogonia right spermatogonia is in plural spermatogonium is in singular so the spermatogonia are present there the spermatogonia slight advancement will produce primary spermatocyte primary spermatocyte converted to secondary spermatocyte secondary spermatocyte with spermatid so all this development requires constant in a constant nutrients and energy because the cells are dividing you know the very first few rounds of division are mitotic division mitosis so 2n to 2n but the last rounds while the secondary spermatocyte converted to spermatids and sperms that is a meiosis division so while they are undergoing this meiosis division they also need rapid supply of nutrients and who provides it sertoli cells are nutritious cells they they gain all the nutrients and supply it to the developing sperm that's the idea so that's why both the type of cells are present near this seminiferous tubule okay so then what you see let's assume we'll see how the sperm is produced in details but now for for now let's assume that yes uh, the sperm is being produced in uh, this testicle and then sperm once produced in seminiferous tubule it will be slowly inserted into another structure in there known as vas efferentia this is the one so seminiferous tubule opens up in vas efferentia vas efferentia is open up in epididymis and then epididymis connected with what vas deferens now vas deferens is the longest tube so there are this tiny tubes you know the very beginning seminiferous tubule highly coiled sperm is produced there once the sperm is produced transferred to vas efferentia from the vas efferentia to the epididymis and from the epididymis vas deferens and ultimately once transferred to the vas deferens as you can see the sperm will take its journey through this tube through this this arrow that i am drawing like this this and then they will reach near this urinary bladder this is the journey of the sperm 
and then what will happen in the urinary bladder i told you that urine and sperm in exit point is the same but in this case while the sperm will be delivered it's not delivered as it is because you know the sperm produced needs to have a matrix right a carrier it's most of the time it's liquid so you need to dissolve it into a liquid what is acting as a liquid different secret secretions from the glands for example this is the prostate gland which is also connected with another small gland known as bulbo urethral gland and both of them connected superficially with the seminal vesicle so from the seminal vesicle prostate and bulbo urethral gland uh, there are secretions and those secretions will bring the sperm it will take the sperm in and slowly bring it outside the body through the urethra so ultimately all these openings they are connected to urethra and finally they will come out from the urethra outside the body that's the idea of the sperm delivery so now once you understand this whole idea of the sperm delivery now we'll see the exact mechanism of how the sperm is produced and that mode is known as spermatogenesis we'll see that but if you look at the the side view you can you can see the the structures in the side view that this is again the penis and this is the urethra and you can see here this is the secretory all this all these tubes are connected so it's like multiple tubes from different directions they are all connected in a position uh, to to make uh, the sperm delivery ready so once it's ready it should be delivered now if you look at this structure this in this seminiferous tubule there are mainly two types of cells in the center you know the two types of cell one type of cell i have already drawn the another type let me draw it here let's see uh, one type of cell is the major male gamete progeny cells you know uh, the progenitor cell that will produce the male gamete or sperm known as spermatogonia spermatogonia in plural spermatogonium in singular now this spermatogonia will be modified into primary spermatocyte okay now this primary spermatocyte is a diploid cell it hasn't started the meiosis cell, cell division yet right so it, it it's it's there from the birth there is no much change in there so spermatogonia is there they are matured into primary spermatocyte this is one type of cell the other type of cell that are present here are known as sertoli cells see sertoli cells sertoli cells will provide nutrients to the primary spermatocyte okay and it will provide nutrients to this uh, to this spermatogonia so that they can convert into primary spermatocyte then secondary spermatocyte then slowly into spermatid these are the sequential events of a spermatogenesis or production of a sperm so this leading this sertoli cells continue to supply nutrients these are nutritious cells right that's why it's very important that both these cells are present in the seminiferous tubule now apart from these two cells if you look at the surrounding fluid part of the tissue these are known as interstitial fluid while the fluid that are circulating in the seminiferous tubule that fluid part of the tissue also contains few type of cells known as leydig cells so let me write here these are leydig cells leydig cells so leydig cells produce androgens what are androgens androgens are known as male hormones you know testosterone is a type of male hormone so the androgens are produced by the leydig cell and it's very very important because this hormones act as a signaling molecule so while leydig cell produce that hormone it will signal the seminiferous tubule to continue with the production of sperm then only you can see the sertoli cell start providing the nutrients and uh, the spermatogonia will be slowly converted to primary spermatocyte and then continuous journey of spermatogenesis to produce the sperm that's the whole idea of uh, the sperm production in 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 the male uh, part of the reproductive system